Hey Storm fans, Brent Cook here, and today I have a very special guest with me, Alex McKinley of TheEpicStorm.com. Alex, what's up? Not much. I am excited to review this card today. What's this card? Uh, it's Wish, which is kind of annoying as a name, because now we can't refer to Burning Wish as just Wish, because there's an actual card named Wish. Yeah, I hear you there. Uh, it's a little bit awkward. Also, if you type Wish into Google, it does not appear. Even like Wish MTG doesn't show up. Uh, SEO nightmare. Mm. But before we get any more into this, Alex, the best way that our viewers can support this channel and the com is by submitting a donation deck. There's three wonderful tiers for everyone to choose from. And, you know, I've done this spiel enough. People know the details. If you want to support us, the com slash donation decks. And if you're unaware, you can read all the details there. We also have a bunch of new sweet card singles at the shop. Make sure to go check those out. That is the epicstorm.com slash shop. And then we also have cool stuff like the token pack, pint glass t-shirts. We've got it all. Make sure to do that. And then the final thing is join our community. Be a part of the combo cabal. We have seven lovely channels for you to join. I would highly recommend the discord. Lots of great combo conversation happening in there. Alex is a member in there. Super active. Alex, what do you think? Yeah, uh, all these places are great to check out. Um, Discord is definitely the place where the most act, where we are the most active. If you're looking to learn how to play any uh, Storm variant throughout most of the formats, there's people who know what they're talking about in that place. Definitely. And if the final way that you can support us is subscribing. It's free to do. It's easy. Just scroll down, hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, make sure to like and comment. What do you think of Wish? Tell us in the comment section down below. And if you want to take it a step further, you can join us. Right next to that subscribe button, there's a join button. You can become a member, unlock sweet badges and emotes. We're a couple people away from unlocking a few more. So if you want to support us, help us unlock those emotes. It would be greatly appreciated. But Alex, that's enough shilling. I want to get back to Wish. So it is in this brand new set. Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Alex, what sets or what formats is this set legal in? So this is a standard release and is intended to replace the core set this year. Uh, so this means that this is legal everywhere. Uh, and for Wish specifically, uh, ever except for Popper, it's it's a rare. Uh, they don't put this type of effect into Popper, which I think uh, Popper fans are a little bit grateful for. I think that's ridiculous. And here it is. Wish! It is a two and a red for a sorcery. You may play a card you own from outside the game this turn. Alex, this is worded kind of weirdly. Why is that? Yeah, so the the easiest comparison is most of the other wishes say you may reveal a card uh, that you own from outside the game and then put it into your hand. Uh this has a lot of fundamental differences. Um, so the biggest one is that upon resolution of Wish, you don't actually have to choose uh, which card you're going to get. You can cast the Wish, and then your entire sideboard in competitive play will be available to you until you cast one of those cards. Um, this, is, this changes a lot of things because you can cast other spells after you resolve Wish. That would j change uh, what you want to get. Uh, and the limitation here is, is that you only get to play it uh, until the end of the turn. So you don't get to cast Wish, get a card from your sideboard, and pass. That's not something you can do. Alex, do you have to select the card immediately, or can you choose later on? Choose later on. Wow, that's pretty powerful. Definitely different from everything else. So the most you know common comparison to Wish would be a card that we're in love with, it's near and dear to my heart at least, Burning Wish. Alex, how is this different from Burning Wish? Yeah, so like I was saying, uh, Burning Wish exiles itself. That's that's a key part that we'll discuss later on. Um, Burning Wish lets you cast it and then pass the turn. Burning Wish is also two mana, and that mana makes a big difference, especially in the contexts in which we're playing both of these cards. Uh, and ad nauseum. Putting four three drops into your deck uh, compared to four two drops is completely different um, in terms of the average mana cost and how much damage you're expected to take off of ad nauseum. That is true. That said, a lot of people are comparing these cards directly. Alex, is there anything stopping you from playing both? 
No, not really. Okay. And I would honestly expect to see both and maybe in some sort of Ruby Storm shell where they want that threat density that we already have from Wishclaw Talisman. So we are not only thinking about these cards in the context of the Epic Storm, we're thinking across formats and even different decks in these formats. So we're trying to cover a little bit of everything today. And I think Burning Wish is the closest comparison. I had people message me instantly when this card was spoiled asking if I'm cutting Burning Wish. Alex, the answer is a simple no. Why would I ever cut Burning Wish? <laughs> yeah, Burning Wish is a whole mana cheaper. Uh, and most of the cards we want to get from our sideboard are sorceries anyway. Uh, despite, you know, some of them, maybe maybe our best card is an instant. I don't know why we ever want to fetch that from our sideboard, but. Yeah. All right. So one of the things that Alex was alluding to was that the card doesn't go to your hand. This plays very, very, very well with Lion's Eye Diamond. You can actually use Lion's Eye Diamond as Black Lotus. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, you get you get all the... It's it's just like casting the cards off of a Galvanic Relay or a Jessica's Will or any... Or like for, for, with Flashback. All of those things, super easy to cast with Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, just don't put Lion's Eye Diamonds in your sideboard to fetch with Wish. Uh Lions of Diamond is so often your best card, and you're better off just drawing it. Yeah, that's a question I expect to be answering a lot, unfortunately. Please, do, if it is a core card in your deck, don't put one in the board. I understand that you'll have access to seven if you put one in the board. The problem is that Wish costs so much mana that you can't really count it as an additional copy because... How often are you going to have three disposable mana plus some extra in order to cast these crucial cards? Lion's Eye Diamond is obviously free, so that's not the case here. But if you're paying three mana to get a Lion's Eye Diamond, you're probably not in the greatest of situations. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge tempo thing. You lose so much tempo by paying three mana for a tutor. Tutors in general are very uh, tempo negative. It's just that they're very good when you can just win the game with them. 2000 and wishing for Lion's Eye Diamond, not very good. 2006 Brent Cook would have been very happy to cut his Trinket Mages for Wish. I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Alex, you talked about how the cards aren't put to your hand. This is actually a drawback with Echo of Aeons because Echo of Aeons has that flashback ability that plays so well with Lion's Eye Diamond. And if you select Echo of Aeons and then add three blue with your diamond you're not going to be a happy camper. I mean, if you also have at least three other mana, then you just cast the front half. That is that works. That's technically true. <laughs> uh, not super likely, though. Not likely at all, in my opinion. Uh, so this is one downside to Wish, other than the fact that it costs an additional mana. So we're not trying to, at least a Burning Wish, we're not trying to say that Wish is a, an unplayable card. I think this is actually going to see a little bit of legacy play. We're trying to show you the differences in the pros and cons of, burn, of Burning Wish and Wish. Yeah, and I think that we haven't talked about this enough, but you have to play the card the, the turn you cast Wish. So much of the theory of TES right now is you cast one of these tutor effects and then you pass the turn and build up mana turn over turn by investing and developing. And this card doesn't let you do that. It plays into Red's impulsive theme of you have to play this card right now. And while that's a powerful effect, and most of the time that's okay, it doesn't. It, it, it's definitely worse than choosing when you want to play the card, whether on the same turn or later in the game. Definitely. Well, Alex, Wish, unlike Burning Wish, doesn't have any restrictions. You can actually get any card. And I've selected some here that are common sideboard cards, plus maybe a few spicy targets that wouldn't normally be in the board. So the first one, we already talked about Lion's Eye Diamond and how you don't really want to invest three mana to have three mana later. It's just too slow for a format like Legacy where the Temple Loss will kill you in so many matchups. And if you have the luxury where that doesn't matter, you are probably going to win that match anyway. Uh, so a card that I do think would be beneficial uh, would be ad nauseum that said like 
Alex mentioned earlier on in this video, that means you're adding a bunch of three drops into your ad nauseum deck. This reminds me a lot of people trying out Death Wish in the very early days of the Epic Storm. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, granted, you don't lose half your life with Wish, but it's still not ideal. You never want to reveal a three to your ad nauseum. In fact, that's why we board out ad nauseum when we're siding into Galvanic Relays. It's just not great. Yeah, and even if we're going to put one in the sideboard, taking it out of the main deck just doesn't make sense. Wish Claw Talisman is so crucial to our strategy, enabling Mox Opal uh, being that six mana tutor for Ad Nauseum. And if you're going to cast Ad Nauseum with one in your deck, that's also awkward, and it eats another sideboard slot, which are really at a premium. So the sideboard Ad Nauseum is really cute, and eight mana is an amount of mana that's very playable. It, it's just not worth it most of the time. Alex. We love to joke on Discord calls about how you're the greatest person ever at resolving ad nauseum. And this is because Alex, like no other person in history, will always reveal Echo of Aeons and Tendrils of Agony. Alex, would you like to add another five mana to that? Oh man, so you're telling me I could take 15 damage off three cards? Yes. And be that good at casting ad nauseum? The, the goal of the card is to flip the fewest number of cards and then die, right? That That's that's the goal? Yes, it's like golf. <laughs> Well, so um, some cards that I actually think would be pretty good with Wish would be AV Progenitor Ooze or Eve. I'm sorry for my fans of the Eternal Glory podcast link in the card above. Uh, so Eve would be a great card because you can use it with Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond gives you that triple green mana into Eve. You don't even have to reveal it. You can wait to see if Wish resolves and then sacrifice the LED, which is a nice benefit here. Uh, Alex, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, uh, Eve is definitely one of the targets that I'm most looking forward to with this. Some of the removal spells, it's going to be really, really awkward to generate enough mana. Like, if you want to remove a Thalia, it, that's going to be four mana for the Wish, and then two mana for the Chain, or three mana for the Decay. So that's six or seven mana just to, you know, remove a, remove a permanent, and that's not very good. Uh, you could achieve that better by playing Massacre, by just getting the grape shot with Burning Wish uh, or the Pulverize. So I, I think that wishing for removal spells, while it might seem appealing at first, once you get into those actual play patterns, it starts to fall off a little bit. Yeah, I can't imagine. Also, you can never beat Deafening Silence with Wish, uh, just throwing that out there. Oh, but yeah, 100% no. Imagine trying to cast a four mana Wish in the face of Thalia or Sphere in a chain of vapor so that's six mana up front but then you have to have the mana the same turn to win it's just so unlikely uh, that said we have these two powerful green one drops here carpet of flowers and xanid swarm these are cards that i actually think would play well with wish uh xanid swarm is an effect where if it resolved you could just sneak in a xanid swarm in the face of i don't know force negation or fluster storm and unlike hope of gear it doesn't matter if your opponent blocks with an endurance or Ice Fang Waddle, anything like that. So I do think Xanid Swarm is gaining a little bit more value than Hope of Gear for the first time in years. Yeah, I'm definitely more interested than uh, in most of the creature spells than the instance in this category. And I don't know if there are many artifacts that I want to wish for either. And Carpet's great. I love Carpet. It's not great in a world where there's prismatic endings everywhere. Yeah, and that's definitely one downside for Xanid Swarm as well. Uh, in fact, Prismatic Ending is part of the reason we're cutting Carpet of Flowers. And now Control Decks have one of the most versatile removal spells in history. So I don't know if the Juke Xanid Swarm plan will ever be effective again. Maybe with a big metagame shift. But it certainly changed for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Well, Alex... These cards cover two different decks. So let's talk about Ad Nauseum Tendrils first. So Wish is a card that in theory, in Ant, could replace something like a Dark Petition or a Wish Claw Talisman, or even say see play in conjunction with some of them. Uh, and the reason why is that it doesn't exile itself like Burning Wish. That said, it does cost an additional one mana. So in my opinion, the beauty behind Wish is that it allows you to beat Veil of Summer as Ad Nauseum Tendrils. You would just need an initial red mana up front, and then from there, you can sacrifice your Lion's Eye Diamond, go get Past in Flames, and then you still have two red post-Past in Flames 
to play with. You replay all your dark rituals, your cabal rituals, those sort of things. Cast that past in flames. Cast your wish again. I'm sorry, you've already cast past in flames. Uh, cast wish again, and then get grape shot. Grape shot through the veil of summer win. And this is a not super difficult line to pull off, in my opinion. Uh, it's already plays into Ant's uh, biggest strength, which is past in flames. Recently, in order for, for them to those decks to beat Veil of Summer, they had to be a bad version of the Epic Storm, resolving a card that they're not actually good with, which is Ad Nauseum. I didn't name the deck. Forgive me. But they're a bad Ad Nauseum deck. So mm-hmm. putting them in that spot is actually really good. Uh, for the person holding Veil of Summer, especially if they're like a rug delver. That's not the case anymore. I'm going to disagree with you a little bit on how easy that line is to pull off. Uh, that's a, that's a very expensive line. Uh, so that's three mana for the Wish, uh, plus four mana for the Passion Flames, plus the red-black floating. So that's, that's a lot of mana uh, that you're going to sink into this. So... It's going to be a little bit harder than you expect to generate all that red mana. I'd expect instead of uh, Past in Flame, or instead of Grape Shot to be the final target, I'd expect a lot of Tendrils to still work uh, for Ant players. Uh, keep in mind that Wishing for Grape Shot is good to beat Veil of Summer, but it's going to be a lot of mana and you have to plan for it. Uh, Wish not exiling itself is such a boon, and you can actually play into the eight tutors that uh, TES does. Ant has historically played... Uh, Grim Tutor Dark Petition and it's been experimenting with Wish Claw Talisman and maybe Wish is better than Wish Claw Talisman um, if you do decide to put Wish into your Ant deck I'd re-examine your mana base and maybe play a second red source uh, as a consideration um, I do agree with that and, yeah and also if you're that all in on uh, Past and Flames you also might be able to cut the Ad Nauseam that's, that's a real possibility yeah especially with adding I, I, three drops to your deck that makes a lot of sense yeah, maybe not not great in an, in, an, in an endurance world, but definitely I think this card has more potential in a shell like Ant than it does in TES for Legacy. Well, if we're already cutting ad nauseum, maybe Ant players, I mean, I'm going down the rabbit hole here, sorry listeners, but maybe they could revisit main deck Peer into the Abyss instead of ad nauseum. That actually makes mm-hmm. quite a bit of sense to me. Uh, but Alex... Let's let's stop talking about that other storm deck. The lesser storm deck. Eat that ant fans. Let's talk about modern storm. Gift storm. Alex, these three cards can be played in gift storm. And like you said, in you know, the mana is a little bit easier, right? Like you're not trying to float red and black mana. With gift storm, you can mostly just win with red, especially when you have these. Granted, blue mana is desirable, gifts and given. You know, all that good stuff. You can make blue mana with your mana morphos, but it's all one color. Your combo color is just red, which really is really beneficial. Uh, so I think that's kind of nice. But in my opinion, the nicest thing about Wish and Gift Storm is that you don't have to play things like the main deck empty, which are actually kind of stinky in the metagame because you're afraid to lose to main deck effects like Leyline out of Bowgles or Repeal. Uh, you could cut the repeal for another copy of wish because like repeal kind of stinks, but you need to play it as a generic catch-all. Now you have wish. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think this makes a lot of sense in a shell like gift storm. Gives you a lot of uh, flexibility, and it does all those piff loops that Ant wants to do. Um, and I think if you were to compare to Strixhaven card, solve the equation, which will is on a slide later, but it makes sense to talk about now. Uh, being one one consistent color throughout makes your combo so much easier and uh it it's it costs two r instead of something like one rr so you can double cost reduce if that's a line you have access to and when you, you're playing those cost reducers it's just it's just burning wish yeah so definitely. i think it has a lot of potential in a shell like gift storm um and honestly most of the modern storm storm variants so since you mentioned cost reducing I wasn't going to tell this story, but I guess I will. When this card was first spoiled, I might have been reading it on my phone while using the toilet. (laughs) And I messaged Alex and I was losing my mind. I thought it was a single red mana for this effect. And I told him, we need to rebuild the Epic Storm. We're going to put an LED in the sideboard. You can just turn one Demonic Tutor for Lion's Eye Diamond. I started like my mind was going 100 miles a minute. Alex did not understand anything I was saying. 
And uh, you mentioned something about us getting weaker to Chalice of the Void because of this card, and I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it wasn't as good as I thought it was. I think if this was a single red, uh, my I'm getting just more thinking that that about card it. Could exist. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd ever lose again. Uh, but this card would have been very, very good, and instead, it's just fine. Uh, but let's move on. We've talked about Gift Storm. We've talked about Ad Nauseum Tendrils. Let's talk about Twiddle Storm, Alex. Lotus Field is no different from Lion's Eye Diamond. You don't want to reduce the odds of finding your best card by putting one in the sideboard. It's been brought up to me a bunch that Wish can get a Lotus Field. That means that on turn four, you're playing your land. You can't win until turn five. This is slow. This is the same speed as Tolaria West. I don't play that card for that very reason. It's just not a playable card. Um, actually, this is a turn slower than Teleria West, so it's even worse. Do not put a Lotus Field in your sideboard. If I see it, I'm not going to help you. You're helpless. Don't do it. Please. It's so much better to draw it than anything else. There's definitely applications for Wish and Twiddlestorm, but finding Lotus Field just isn't one of them. The math doesn't work out. Uh, the other card on this slide, however, is I think one of the better targets for Legacy. Uh, in Caracas, bounce that Thalia, bounce that Gaddic Teague. It's definitely worse than it used to be uh, with the printing of Collector Roof. So you don't just have uh, a wishable answer to most most hate bears. But it's definitely, I think, one of the more interesting options because it's a zero man answer to those cards. Exactly, I do agree with you quite a bit. And this slide is mostly just to emphasize: you can get with you can get lands with Wish. It's one of the trickier things you can do. You can just play it as a cool explorer, essentially. Um, I guess explorer is not the best uh, example here because yeah. you can't play an extra land, but you can play a land off it, and it's sneaky. Your opponent might not expect it. Uh, I don't know. Just throwing it yeah, out there. Yeah, it, it does say play and not cast, so that's the that's the wording to look for there. And then our next slide is Twiddlestorm focused. So this is a sweet line, Alex. You can cast Wish. And with three mana floating, you can play Underworld Breach floating one. Depending on the size of your graveyard and the resources you have in there, you can cast Twiddle. Well, you might want to cast Twiddle a few times, maybe twice. And then from there, you can cast Wish again. This would leave you with two mana floating. You can get Tome Scour, Scour yourself, Twiddle, Scour, Twiddle, Scour, Twiddle, Scour, Twiddle, Scour, back and forth. Uh, you might need a Scour twice in the middle of there. Uh, it depends on what you have going on. Uh, but essentially, you can deck yourself. And from there, you can cast Wish again and get one of two win conditions. You can get a Grape Shot. You could get Thassa's Oracle. You can get Eve, Progenitor, Ooze. Whatever makes your heart feel warm inside. I don't care what the win con is. But this is a essentially a one-card combo. Uh, just You need a stocked graveyard. That's the other resource. That is the other half of the combo, essentially. But this is going to open up new combo you know, lines in Modern. I think it's going to be sweet. So, so, Bryant, you're telling me that if I have an Underworld Breach, I get to wish for unlimited wishes. Yes. <laughs> that, is, that is the huge upside of this card not exiling itself. Uh, you get to cast it again and again and again uh, with whatever regrowth effect you want. I was going to make some sort of bad joke about being a genie with unlimited wishes and how that's not allowed, but uh, I guess you can. Just you need enough resources in your graveyard. I'm not sure how the mana checks out on that, to be honest. I'm not sure how often you can cast it. Wish for Underworld Breach, it's definitely the same thing as wishing for unlimited wishes. That That's, that's the line. Okay. Well, get your Japanese foil... <laughs> copies of tome scour they're now modern playable i know a lot of us love tome scour in the pioneer version of lotus breach it's back i'm glad i didn't get rid of mine spend that dollar 50 get your japanese photo tome scour it's going to be playable and then this is the final slide of this video alex already spoiled solved the equation i think that's a really good comparison to wish uh, i don't know how these two will coexist or if they will but Solve the Equation is a card that I was really high on in Gift Storm before finding Twiddle Storm. It is essentially an Infernal Tutor in Modern, and it allows you to do those Past and Flames lines uh, that are available in Ad Nauseum Tendrils. Wish does that too now, but it requires sideboard space. So now you have to juggle sideboard space with main deck cards, 
maybe solve the equation gets a little bit worse if you're not running anything like repeal and then th that just makes wish better but these exist in the same space any thoughts on that yeah uh, i think that one of the big things is that when you're playing uh pioneer for fey of wishes is the the mana difference between three and four is actually huge when you ha when all of your lands tap for three mana uh just being able to tap one lotus field to cast wish versus ca tapping a lotus field and something else to cast fey of wishes is i think a meaningful difference uh wish doesn't cycle uh forever the way fey of wishes does so that might be relevant for the deck, but I think that mana cutoff point might be meaningful. Definitely. So in my opinion, I am more likely to cut the Mastermind's Acquisition than Fae of Wishes. I think you probably still need some sort of split, if I'm being honest, uh, because you do need to be able to beat Slaughter Games type effects. I'm not sure if you keep Fae of Wishes or if you keep Mastermind's Acquisition. I haven't figured that out yet. Fae of Wishes is easier to cast. Uh, you can also, uh, what is it called? Oh, why am I blanking on this? With Hidden Strings. Cypher. Cypher onto it with Hidden Strings. That's a mode you can do. Um, you can surprise block a Notion Thief with Vizier. There's like a bunch of cool tricks you can do with Fae of Wishes. So I think that gives it the upside over Mastermind's Acquisition, at least in my opinion. But Pioneer is a format that I'm actually really excited about wishing. And if anything, I'm not... Don't crucify me over this. I think Pioneer might be slow enough where you could put a Lotus in your board, but I'm still not even sold on that. I think it's still probably better in the main deck. Mm -hmm. well, well, Pioneer is Pioneer. I, I think that showing all these cards, these are you know some of the newest tutors and newest Wishes effects that they've printed. And I think it shows how pushed Wish is compared to those cards. It's cheaper. It's more flexible. Uh, the play on your turn, the play this turn restriction is meaningful. Uh, it means you can't get things like counter spells as well, but you can slip a Pact of Negation in your sideboard, cast Wish, let the combo turn continue, and you have access to that Pact of Negation the whole time. Uh, or it can just become your win condition. Uh, a card is flexible. Um, you're going to get a lot of opponents that don't quite understand how this works uh, the first couple of times. It's a wacky card. Definitely. Alex, any closing remarks on Wish? I'm excited to play with it. I think this is the type of card that you have to play with to realize how good it is. I am very... I would rate this card like a 7 out of 10. It, it's its good. It's not format-breaking. It's not format-defining. But you're, you're going to see it. I agree with that. I can't wait to play it. More likely in modern than any other format for me personally. Maybe I'll play mm -hmm. some Ruby Storm with it. But more combo options is always a great thing in my eyes. All right, so I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. I know I mentioned it in the beginning, but do it again here. Subscribe, become a member, all that good stuff. Alex, thank you for joining me. I know that you had already talked quite a bit about Wish with other people, and I appreciate you doing it with me. Everyone, take care. Cheers. Have a great day. Keep storming.